do you think sustainable farming is a game changer for teachers? Thank you very much. Um, before I respond to this question, I've just spoken about um, organic farming. Your camera has captured some white things on the ground. That's wood ash. As an organic farmer, that's fertilizer I have applied to the crops like that. That's wood ash. Wood ash, when applied to crops, especially crops that bear fruits, like pepper, tomato, cucumber, okru, when you apply wood ash to crops, what it does is that it releases potassium and calcium to the crop. So you see, I've applied it to the crop. When absorbed by the soil, it's going to release potassium and calcium to the crop. Potassium is necessary for flowering or to boost flowering and fruiting. Calcium will help to strengthen the tissue of the plants. It will help to strengthen it. And also, when the fruits are formed, it will strengthen the bark. That is what we call the epicap of the fruit. So the fruit will be difficult to rot because of the calcium. Lack of calcium in tomato fruits leads to a disorder or an abnormality called blossom and rot, where you see the end of the tomato becoming rotten. Not the whole fruit, but the, the end of it becoming rotten. It's as a result of lack of calcium. So I have done this to supply calcium and then potassium to that. So that is what an organic, uh, an organic farm, farmer does. I have banana peels over there, which also release potassium to crops. I use neem tissue, orange peels, purple leaves as my organic pesticide. That is what I use. Tomorrow I'm going to apply neem tissue to my okra and then the tomato. I have intercropped this tomato with okra. It has started germinating. One week time when you come, you see the okra. I have intercropped, so there will be okra together with tomato here. So I will apply it. So I don't use any synthetic or any inorganic chemical. Okay, now let me respond to your question. As a teacher, it is ideal that when you want to go into farming, you adopt what we call sustainable agricultural practices. And sustainable agricultural practices has to do with a system of farming or a method of farming that is environmentally friendly, that has no harmful effect on the ecosystem, on microbial life, on living life, on the environment. That's totally what constitutes the environment. So when you are doing that, and also putting in place practices that will limit the release of carbon into the atmosphere, because this causes what we call chlorofluorocarbons, which leads to global warming. Global warming is now a challenge worldwide. Mm -hmm. So, as, as um, what is the name? As somebody who wants to adopt sustainable agricultural practices, the best is you practice organic farming. You can practice what we call now. That is now the order of the day: climate smart agricultural practices. Climate smart agricultural practices simply means that adopting farming methods that will be environmental friendly, that will not pollute the environment, the air, the soil, but will rather be ameliorating the, or if you like, improving the activities of beneficial soil microorganisms and also adding nutrients to the soil so that you don't have to apply nutrients all the time, like we are doing those who resort to inorganic and then synthetic uh, materials, what they do. Every year you have to apply. If you don't apply, it will not do. Unlike organic, if you apply, it can be there in the soil for three, four years. That is what we call sustainable agriculture. So examples include conservative, and uh, we have something we call conservative farming. Conservative farming, you don't seal the land too much. You can even leave the grasses and plant crop inside the grasses. That's conservative farming. Then we have organic farming, which I've just explained. Then we have climate smart agricultural practices. Greenhouse is one of the climate smart agricultural practices. Inside the greenhouse, it creates its own environment. So it separates the crops inside the greenhouse from the outside environment. In 
simple terms, the outside environment has no influence on the crops inside. The greenhouse separates the outside, the crops from the outside environment. So it has its own environment, which we call micro environment. We will go into the greenhouse and you see. I have made my personal. So this is what we call climate smart agricultural practices. Thank you very much. So maybe the next question it, it goes together with the question I just asked. So, mm -hmm. so you, can you tell us what every teacher should know about organic fertilizers? Yeah. Um. When we talk about organic fertilizers, a fertilizer is any material, be it solid or liquid, which when applied to the soil or plants. It can release nutrients for the plant to grow or to thrive very well. That's what we call a fertilizer. So organic fertilizer simply means that the material should come from natural or organic source, that is plant and animal. So such material that when you apply will release nutrients, it should be from plant source or animal source. So you can use poultry droppings, sheep droppings, cow dung. You can also use residue or plant, plant leaves, fresh leaves. If you bury it, it will rot and release nutrients. This is what we call organic fertilizers. So a, a material that can release nutrients other than in organic source, but it should be of natural source. That is what we call organic. And somebody who resort to this material in farming, it's an organic farmer and you are doing sustainable agriculture at the same time an environmentally friendly farmer so that is basically an organic fertilizer and let me tell you one thing this is cheap it's cheap a lot of people rear animals you can go and then sweep or you can make them gather them you go and feed them and come and apply even if it will be sold to you it will be done at a cheaper cost so organic fertilizers are cheap. They are very cheap, unlike the inorganic and the synthetic one. So you don't spend much. And when you are doing that, you are helping to conserve the environment because you are not polluting the environment. You are not polluting water bodies. You are not polluting the soil. And you are also helping or enhancing microbial activities, the activities of beneficial organisms in the soil. We call them um, soil beneficial organisms who are enhancing their activity because they have to act on it to break it down to release the nutrients. So, and it also helps to bind soil particles together, thereby improving the structure and the texture of the soil. So, that is basically what we call organic fertilizers.